Her Majesty the Queen, accompanied by her husband the Duke, comes to Edinburgh Castle. First, she is to receive the key of the ancient fortress. Before being admitted, the Queen is challenged by the sentries. Who goes there? Her Majesty the Queen. The Queen commands that the gates be opened to her and the governor of the castle moves forward to offer her the key, symbolizing that the castle is the property of the sovereign. The ceremony of entrance ended. The Queen leaves the Landor to enter the castle. The Duke of Edinburgh wears the magnificent uniform of Colonel-in-Chief of the Queen's own Cameron Highlanders. Long has the great castle kept guard over Her Majesty's northern capital. Within its walls, the Queen visits many of the places which tell how proud a role it has played in the glorious history of Scotland. The Queen leaves the castle to ride once more through Edinburgh. The Governor, Lieutenant General Barber, bids her goodbye, and again the streets of the city echo with a jubilant shout as the Royal Landor moves away from the castle. Throughout the centuries, Edinburgh has honoured many great and well-loved sovereigns, but none has captured her heart so readily as the newly crowned Queen Elizabeth. The same afternoon, nearly 30,000 people gather at Murray Field to welcome Her Majesty to a lavish display and pageant in her honour. Sir James Miller, Lord Provost of Edinburgh, the Lady Provost and Mr James Stewart greet the royal couple on their arrival. The Queen wears a long woolen coat of lichen green with a small hat to match. During the display, which includes many events staged by schoolchildren and service cadets, the Queen receives a basket of roses from 16-year-old Evelyn Ross of Muir School, who has chosen for this honour from many hundreds of schoolgirls for her grace and charm. More than 500 dancers take the field for a display of Scottish country dancing. Thousand school children join the floral pageant and rose dances. Now a display of Highland dancing. For two hours, the Queen and the Duke watched the magnificent display at Murrayfield, the children's own tribute to their royal visitors. St Giles Cathedral is the setting for the installation of the Duke of Edinburgh as a Knight of the Thistle. Heralds precede the procession of those who already hold the noble title. They include three knights who were installed last year. Prince Philip was to have received the honour with them, but he was unable to attend through illness. Outside the cathedral stands the Dean of the Thistle and Chapel Royal, Dr. Waugh, to receive Her Majesty and the Duke upon their arrival. The Queen wears the flowing mantle of the Order and a hat of black velvet with a white ostrich plume. The Duke wears naval uniform beneath his robes. Within St. Giles, in the tiny Thistle Chapel, the ceremony is held and the Duke takes the solemn oath. The Dean walks before the Queen and her husband as they leave the cathedral to journey again through the city. Lanarkshire too is visited by the Queen.
Lord Clydesmuir, the Lord Lieutenant, welcomes Her Majesty to Lanark, and on behalf of the townspeople, six-year-old Diana Colville presents her with a bouquet. This is an historic occasion for Lanark, for it is the first time that a reigning monarch has paid the town an official visit. Lieutenant Colonel Sir R. O'Connor, Colonel-in-Chief of the Cameronians, is presented to the Queen. A guard of honour, mounted by the 1st Battalion of the Cameronians, who have just returned from fighting in Malaya, is inspected by Her Majesty. The country town of Lanark, the second oldest royal borough in Scotland, is gay with flags and bunting, as are all the towns visited by Her Majesty during her tour. Lieutenant Colonel Henning and Lieutenant Colonel Alexander, both of the Cameronians, chat with the Queen. Hamilton, Motherwell, Airdrie, Coatbridge and scores of villages all give her a great welcome. Holyrood House is again a scene of splendour and pageantry, as in bright morning sunshine, her Majesty and the Duke are escorted onto the parade ground. As Colonel-in-Chief of the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders, the Queen is to present the 1st Battalion with new colours. On parade are more than 300 officers and men of the 1st Battalion, many of whom have recently returned from frontline service in Korea. Her Majesty, who wears a summer dress of white and gold, inspects the 1st Battalion. The inspection over, Pipe Major Pitt Keithley shows the Queen the pipe banner she recently gave to the battalion. Her Majesty walks towards the dais from where she will watch the old colours marched off the parade ground. In perfect slow time, the solemn ceremony of trooping begins. The new colours are dedicated and now the Queen presents them to two sons of the regiment. The Queen's colour is received by Lieutenant Duncan Darrock. The regimental colour by Lieutenant Ian Robertson. Now the Queen addresses the battalion. The presentation of new colours opens a new chapter in your history. Let them both represent to you the ideals of the past and be a call to future effort. I am sure that the good name of the Argyles is safe in your hands and that you will honour and guard these new colours, which, as your Colonel-in-Chief, I am proud to present to you today as a mark of my confidence in the regiment. Now the 1st Battalion march past Her Majesty the Queen, proudly escorting their new colours. The regiment's pony mascot is in the parade. Her Majesty makes a special point of chatting with many veterans of the regiment. The Queen's very genuine interest in her people has won her the warm affection of all during her tour of Scotland. Mm -hmm. 